to y'all. Just reflecting a little bit on our, on our gospel reading today, Gospel According to Mark, as I told you, it's a special one because there are, there is a couple of different ways that the, the Gospel of Mark ends, which doesn't happen in all of them. Um, if you were hearing those versions in the Gospel of Mark, and, and, and at least one of them made you go, huh, that doesn't sound a lot like Mark at all, there's a reason for that. And it's because it wasn't written by Mark. <laughs> If you read that longer version, it doesn't sound anything like the rest of the Gospel of Mark. Um, and, and when you go back to some of the oldest, earliest manuscripts, in the original versions, it wasn't in there. Somewhere along the line, um, there had been different groups of people that had just decided to, to change the ending, to add on to it. Not change it, but add on to it. The original ending, if you read your Bible, ends with the empty tomb. And the Marys, they come to the empty tomb, and Jesus isn't there. There's an angel there, and, and the angel says, he's not here. He is risen. Go tell his disciples. And then it says the Marys ran away in fear and didn't tell anyone because they were afraid. The end. That's how the gospel ends, which seems like, it seems like an abrupt way to end it. But you got to understand that what's important to, to Mark is this idea that God, God's son, Jesus, loves us so much that he would be willing to be sacrificed for us. That, that God's love for you and for me is so deep that he would be willing to die for us. That's how much God loves us and does, in fact, die for us, for our sins to save us. And and so that's how it ends. That's how it ends in Mark, because what's important to Mark is that you understand, oh, come here, is that you understand that that's how much God loves you, to be willing to, to be willing to die on the cross for you. Now, I understand, however, some folks that want to add on to the story. And it comes from this place of saying, okay, God loves me that much that he was willing to die for me, how should, I, how should I respond to that? How should I live as a result? And so there's people over the years that added on to the story. They added on to the story to say, oh, well, in response to God's love, the disciples went and healed others and proclaimed his good news, or, or, he, he went, or they went out and they shared the news with people. Are you doing that? You shared the news with people. Yeah. And it leads me to this conclusion. If it's okay for other people to tack on their story at the end of Mark is how they respond. You know what? It's okay for us to do that too. It's okay for you and for me to say, how would I end that story? God loves me so much that he would die on the cross for me. How am I going to, how would I add on to the next chapter? Because that is what your life is. Your life is the next chapter in the Gospel of Mark. Living in response to God's love for you. That deep of a love to be sacrificed for you. And so in that way, um, what would it be for all of us? What would it be for all of us if we got to write the next chapter in the Gospel to say, how is my life going to be a continuation of the story of my thanksgiving for God's love for me. And I would love to hear some time from y'all about how you would end that story, how you would write that chapter. But in the meantime, let us give thanks to God. Amen. And now y'all, let us continue with the Apostles' Creed.